Belinda with Belinda's Bobbles and welcome to Christmas in July day 29, 30, and 31, the grand finale. <laughs> um, I took a couple of days off to kind of just rest and they were busy at work, nothing was happening, so if I came on it would have been just me talking about just about anything and everything and I wanted instead to concentrate on getting ready for this episode because for my grand finale I am finishing off my um, stash videos now I've if you're new here on previous days in um, Christmas in July I did go over different areas of my stash and also what I was doing with the majority of my minis, which was making a Christmas advent. So you're welcome to go back to those. There are just, uh, one of them was mostly my commercial yarns or larger stash and a bit of mix with it. Another one was my cotton yarns, then um, creating my scrappy advent. And this one, this is my hand dyed stash with a few commercials thrown in. Now over to the side that you can't see over here I also have some that have been caked up but never used or barely used. There's also um, commercial yarn, sock yarns that are some favorites and my alpacas. Now the alpacas that I have over here they are from alpaca farms and I met either the alpacas or their descendants on these whenever I've gone to the, um, some alpaca farms. Some of this is from North Carolina and the rest is here from here um, close to me at Keller, Texas. So do y'all want to deep dive with me? Now this is not how I keep my stash. I'm trying to reorganize so I've got all my containers off to the side. But I figured this was my easiest way, <laughs> just putting them in the laundry basket. Wouldn't we do more laundry if this was our laundry every day or every week? But I just threw them in here so that we could kind of go through them easier and um, see what I find. I'm going to divide them out as I'm pulling them out into DK and fingering weight. And what I'm also looking for is of course this is a cascade heritage so it's not a hand dyed but Seaver has asked for a muscle burr half hat and so I'm going to be looking through here for what I want to put with this green for his muscle burr hat so if you see me pushing stuff off to the side with the green that's what's going on <laughs> so I'm going to set it here so let's go through this have some story time with it because some of it's going to bring up memories and then we'll take a look at what's left. So I hope you have coffee, tea, soda, energy drink like I do at the moment, water, whatever it is you're drinking this morning, this afternoon, or this evening. And let's just have some yarny fun. <laughs> okay, how am I going to do this? I don't want to keep um, reaching down. So I'm going to get something so I can sit this in front of me. I'll be right back. Okay, so I think I've got this figured out. I've got my sewing chair, office chair here with everything on it. Okay, so let's just start in. What do we got here? This is Davy Baby Yarn, a Knight's Fork. Dave's Gambit and what is this 80% merino 10% cashmere and 10% nylon fingering weight and it is really soft you can see all the purples and pinks in there mostly just different shades of purple with a, just a tone of pink and what is this one it said fingering okay so fingering, that came from Fiber Lady, which I have some other um, hand-dyed bamboo in here from Fiber Lady as well. 
which that's one of the shops that's local to me. Okay. Then I've got some Madeline Tosh, one of a kind. Basically, it's a highlighter yellow. And this one is, is this worsted? Yeah, this is actually worsted. So I was figuring on making Sam a hat or do something with that. I don't know. But it's going to have to go over here because it's worsted. I think that's probably the only worsted one in here. Another Madeline Tosh. Euro Sock. And this one is fingering, and it's also one of a kind. These are um, ones that I got. Um, Madeline Tosh is actually located here in Fort, uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And so I went to one of their open days, and that's when I got these. So. Then I have some Chick Ashby. She used to be uh, located over near, near Waxahachie. Um, and I... She was opened for a couple of yarn crawls that I went to. Now, she's no longer dying, but um, some of her yarn is still being sold, the last of it, um, with a local yarn shop. And so I picked up two of these. Gingerbread Latte and Julia's Rose. I picked, see a little bit of the different pinks and colors in there and I picked those up and they're 20 let's see this one is 20 uh Julia's Rose is 25% mulberry silk and 75% uh, superwash merino gingerbread latte is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon and I had one more of hers that was in my stash from a couple of years ago. And this is Dynasty of the Duck. And it is a DK. I figured I could hold these double. 75% Superwash Merino and 25% Silk. And I wanted to be able to put those three together. And I think it did pretty good with the fact that I did not have this with me. I think those are still going to be amazing together in whatever I put them together with. So, okay, they get their own category because they're sticking together. <laughs> okay. I don't have the um, tag on here anymore, but I know that this is a Hank Me Home Tonight. I don't know the colorway. But it's probably one of her rainbow ones. And I've got several, as you will see as we go through, quite a few Hank Me Home tonight. Uh, they are sold exclusively through On The Lamb Yarn Shop here locally. But it's also online on their website. So that's fingering. Uh, this is Fancy Fibers. I got this on the yarn crawl a few years ago. I don't think they're dying anymore. I think they closed down, in fact. Um, Whims Merino. Now, this is a Z-twist yarn for crochet. And I was wanting to try that out. I thought I'd gotten a couple, but I may not have. And this is a number three, so DK. It's a thick DK. I don't think there's even a color on here. No, nope. no color. And it's hand painted yarn and it's not saying superwash, it's superwash, oh, superwash merino. Okay, so, so there we go. And it's just a nice red with a little bit of tone to it. So that goes in with my DK. All right, so these are commercial. They're Wool Pop. And they are DK. 50% Bamboo, 35% Superwash Wool, and 15% Polymide. And the color is 612 True Red. I got these on Yarn Crawl this year. 
and the reason for them is a particular top that I fell in love with at, is it you to yarn? Yarn and you, I think. Yarn and, I think it's yarn and you in Farmersville, Texas. So that has a specific purpose, so that's why it's in here. Stick it with my DKs here. This is Wonderland Yarns, and they are, where are they out of? Let's see if it says. It just uh, says hand dyed by Frab Juice Fibers, F-R-A-B-J-O-U-S, Fibers. I think they're out of New England. It just says dyed in the U.S., and I got this on uh, when I step, um, happened to stop in in Arkansas on their yarn crawl, which their yarn crawl just ended for this year. But we were coming back from the East Coast. Now this is called um, Mary Ann, and it's 85% super uh, fine superwash merino wool and 15% nylon. And I loved that pop of color. I wanted to see what that would do. So I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to do something. <laughs> also, while I was on, in Arkansas, I found this. This is Colored by Christy, hand-dyed in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, which is where I got that other one. Silky Sock, 50% Merino, 50% Silk, and it's called Mac and Cheese, and it is so soft. Now, I did pull a tiny bit off of this and put it in my Scrappy Granny tea, but cut just a tiny bit off, but it's still almost entire. I, I may have used five, five grams, maybe seven, something like that, so I still have most of it here. And it is so silky. I wish I'd gotten more. Mm. They all smell so good. Mm. Okay. This is Tippy Tree Yarns. Tippy Super DK 4 ply. And it's Moira's Roses, Moira's Roses Garden. And I actually, it's hand dyed in Colorado. Look at those blues coming through there. I got this, um, I won this actually from uh, during COVID from On the Lamb Yarn Shop. Okay, here we have Hank Me Home Tonight. And this one has some Stellina. I don't know if you can see that. But all those great colors in there. And this is Boogie's Boys on Sparkle Sock. 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Stellina. Okay, I think for timing and going through this, I'm, I don't know if I should say the fibers and everything or not, but I, I would want to know that, so okay, I'm going to keep going with that. <laughs> you may just have to fast forward through me a little bit. And Surprise, surprise, another Hank Me Home Tonight. <laughs> this is Jungle Room um, Pinch DK. 75% Superwash and 25% Nylon. So this will be a, a pair of socks eventually, I'm thinking. And this was when she was doing a tribute to Elvis. This is Undead Yarn Vampire. In the color way, wildflowers. And I got this from the first Fiber Fest I ever went to. So that was probably about six, seven years ago. So it's been in my stash for a little bit, so it needs to be used. But I mean, look at all those fun tie dyed colors. Okay, fingering. And, oh, that was 75% superwash wool, 25% nylon. Then I have a Charming You Lush Sock. 
This is 85% superwash marine, um, merino wool and 15% nylon. And the colorway is Beetlejuice. So I have this set aside because I am waiting for the new Beetlejuice movie to come out. And I want to cast something on with this. Set it up a little bit because I don't want that one to get lost. <laughs> and I still haven't found anything that's jumping out at me. I would have liked that, but I don't want to do sparkle for Seaver. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so I would love that, but I don't know if he would. Okay, back to this. So this is a Hank Me Home Tonight, Texas Sunrise in Squishy Sock, 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. And Night Owl Fibers. This is Rachel down in Houston, Texas. And this was the first time I met her. I met her at Juju's, and she does self-striping yarn that is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. Um, this is Barn Owl Sock, which is 75% superwash, 25% nylon in Reading Rainbow. And I actually got two of these skeins from her. Um, one, the other skein, I made a pair of socks with it, held double, because I was doing DK socks at that time. And, um, sorry, a little piece of lint just went flying down there and caught my attention. And then the rest of it is in my advent. So this is coming back at Christmas time as far as just a small amount. Again, I would love that, but I don't know if Seaver will. So, I don't know. I may have to look at that with him. Then I have a Farm Twist 100% Superwash Merino Wool from Madeline Tosh. And this is was custom for Juju Knits called Ladybird. And it kind of gives you the impression of uh, blue bonnets in the grass. If you look at, I think was what they were going towards because, and all the wildflowers, because Lady Bird Johnson actually was the one that did the um, Texas Beautification Project to where she had wildflowers planted along the Texas highways. Unfortunately, a lot of those wildflowers have gone away just because of um, construction but every spring whenever the blue bonnets come out it's just like life is going on and it excites me part of that is because blue bonnets were so important to my mom who passed away over 30 years ago and so it's just a link to her and even though we were living in Virginia she she actually planted some blue bonnets there Okay, so this was, I think it's DK. Yes, it's DK. So I'll put that in the DK side over here. I need to skein these up differently. Oh, okay, I did have two. Okay. Another, uh, this was another, okay, this can't stay like this. <laughs> I thought I had two of these. Because if I'm going to cr crochet something, I'm not going to get anything done with one skein. If you're not a crocheter, you won't be aware. But basically, crocheting takes... Okay, I got my ring there. Crocheting takes twice as much yarn on average as knitting. So I never could understand why in the past yarn shops weren't as inclusive towards crocheters as towards knitters. 
Now that has changed quite a bit. There may still be some out there, but on the majority, most most um, local yarn shops are um, very welcoming. The ones in this area definitely are to crocheters. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? I'm really into my reds right now, but they're um, very inclusive towards the crocheters as well as um, knitters. And I just never could understand that years ago because crocheters are going to buy twice as much yarn just because it takes twice as much yarn. Okay, so back to that. This, and this is the way that she had these displayed and I never have skeined them up. But this is the fiber, fiber seed sprout worsted 90% merino wool superwash, 10% nylon, and this is worsted in Queen of Hearts. And this is from the fiber seed out of Tampa, Florida. And the way that this is dyed is was dyed specifically for a particular pattern. I'll put the pattern's name right here, and I actually got the pattern with the yarn. And I bought this before I started crochet or before I started knitting it was something I wanted to do and so I bought this and that pattern but I guess it would be considered kind of assigned pulling because you have to cast the yarn on in a specific place and then it does its own um, she's the way it pulls and everything is very specific to get a tie-dyed look. And at the time, I'm just playing with it, it's so soft. <laughs> My baby. Uh, at the time, I could not cast on in a way to where I could consistently get that starting point. That's changed, I can do it now. So I need to get my pattern out and make, uh, make this, it's, it's an eternity scarf. So that needs to be done, and I, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to tie this up or something because this is going to drive me nuts. But it is DK, so it's going to lay there. Okay, so apparently this has lost its tag over the time, but I actually have two of the undead wildflowers. Hmm. Huh. Oh. Wouldn't this make a pretty cool secret summer crop or something along those lines? We're only about a third of the way through the basket, by the way. So let's be able to grab three at once. This is Fiber Lady Midori. And it is Fingering Weight. Strawberry Surprise. And it is 100% rayon bamboo luxury yarn. And I mean, look at the skein or the color on that. And this is fully milled there at Fiber Lady. I have a video from 2023's yarn crawl showing Dave um, explaining his process. And if you're interested in seeing what a small mill um, does, which he does quite a bit with this. And I love the bamboo yarn. I actually crocheted a um, lace top and entered it into the Texas State Fair in 2019. And that's that was with a, um, I, can't, I don't think it was Midori. It was a DK um, yarn from his shop. But I actually got a blue ribbon with that one. And it's still one of my favorite tops. It's just so silky. Okay, so this is fingering weight. And Hank Me Home Tonight. Pinch DK, so this is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And this is Christmas PJs. So this will be a Christmas yarn. And it is a DK, so those will be some great DK socks.
So far, I'm about half and half <laughs> fingering in DK. Uh, this is Sweet Tea Yarns, Molly Klein Designs on Etsy. And this is a Sweet Sock, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and Pastel Rainbow Unicorn. And this was another one that I won during COVID from uh, On The Lamb Yarn Shop. She was running all sorts of raffles and stuff I was having a lot of fun with. Okay. These three are don't have any names on or, or anything. I'd have to weigh them to find out how much I have here. They look like fingering. I don't think they're sweet tea. I'm just not sure who the dyer was because this was something that I won <laughs> at On The Lamb Yarn Shop. I had a really lucky year when it came to yarn during COVID because I've already used some of the stuff that I won. But those colors are pretty amazing together, but I need to figure out how much is here and get it made up. Because I do. That's the thing is when you go back and look through this stuff, you're like, oh, wow, yes. But is that... This looks more like DK. It's either a very fluffy fingering or a DK, so I'm going to have to measure this out. I'm going to kind of put it on its own at the moment since it's unknown. So this is dye to spin. She's not dying anymore. We're hoping that she'll start back up. She, she has mentioned that maybe, uh, but she's, she's got so much going on in her life, and including a game show. <laughs> what was it, the game show? Some kind of a um, show online. Or, um, and I'll have to figure all that out. But this is Yarn for Yarn Snobs. Uh, Superwash Merino Silk 70-30. So Merino wool and 70%, uh, 30% silk. And it is a DK. see the color. She doesn't have the color. I was think, I'm thinking this may have just been like a special COVID color she was doing at the time. Uh, Ashley's also the one that I learned how to do dyeing in crock pot. That was her technique that um, I've played with. And she did, she has on her dye to spin Facebook page, there are some how-tos um, showing how she's done it in the past. So, DK. This is Die to Spin again. And this was 2020 Yarn Crawl exclusive at Juju Knits called Here Comes the Sun. 100% Superwash Merino. And now she's, yeah, she still has the yarn for yarn snobs. <laughs> yeah, DK. And it's 100% super wash. It's got some great color down there. Now, if there was a hand dyer that I was collecting before Hank Me Home Tonight, it would have been dye to spin. So I was trying to figure out what in the world my label fell off. I'm sorry if everything's kind of, I've got too much white on, I guess, but I wanted the colors to pop. I should have just gone with black, but then I would have had um, yarn all over me. So this came off. Bear with me a second while I tie it back on. Okay, so all of this goes together. So this is with Mouse, Mate, Mouse Witch Yarn, handmade by Poppy and Mouse, which is Mandy with Mouse's Makes YouTube channel. 
And this was the yarn of the year for November, 75% superwash merino, 25% um, nylon and fingering. And I had gotten a mini set that, um, she called these her November minis, but these were dyed just for Belinda. So she put together a November set of five minis to go with this. See if I can get, there we go. So you can kind of see the colors and how they go. Because I'm wanting to make a top that goes, my idea was to take the top from the top down using this and then start striping it once I get past the bust. And depending on what I have left of this, but I wanted to just kind of do a stripey top with all of that. So this has a purpose. So I'm gonna stick it up there with the, I'm going to do something. <laughs> and um, Mandy sells Mouse Witch yarn on her um, Kofi, Kofi account. If you go to Mouse's Makes uh, on YouTube and go down into her description box, you can find a link over there. All right, so this is Show Me Yarn, chocolate covered strawberries, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and it is a self striping. And I got this whenever I saw on, um, I've seen them at shows before, but I got this because I saw that she was going to close up, unfortunately. They weren't going to be able to die anymore, and she had them on sale big time. So I got this one and another one that I've already put aside for a pair of socks, so sorry. That one was an Americana, so it was red, white, and blue. So that's that. And then this is Sparkle Sock, Hank Me Home Tonight. And this is called Jack. It's kind of blackish purple with undyed. And it kind of went with posers here, but this is a DK, pinch DK. And it also has that purple into black. So I was thinking about maybe holding this double because I wanted a little bit more saturation and put it with this for a project. Okay, so this is Exmoor Sock 4-ply and this is John Arben Textiles. I'm going to put them together just because they're both the same, they're 50 grams, and I found this in Dallas at a yarn shop. Um, sorry, I can't think of um, the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, okay, so this is 60% Exmoor Blue Face Superwash, 20% Coriadel Superwash, 10% Zwartbles. Z-W-A-R-T-B-L-E-S. I'm going to have to look that one up. And 10% nylon. And it is superwash um, treated wool out of Devon in the UK. Colorways are fairy thimble. And some of this has been pulled off. So uh, all I can see is Peggles, P-E-G-G-L-E-S. It probably had more of a name than that, but that's part of the name. And so I was wanting to work with some of this. I was kind of excited to be able to get some, some John Arben over here. We're getting there. I can't see how long I've been recording, but we're getting there. <laughs> okay, so this is Bad Sheep Yarn. Winter Sunrise, 75% Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Stellina. It's sock weight, 
and it's hand dyed in North Pole, Alaska. This was my souvenir yarn and my birth or Christmas present from Seaver, but it was my souvenir yarn from Alaska. And I'm thinking Bad Sheep Yarn has relocated to Florida now. <laughs> But they were in Alaska when I got this. <laughs> okay, so Yuta Yarn, Surrey and Silk Lace. 75% Brushed Baby Surrey Alpaca, 25% Mulberry Silk. Hand Painted Nature Inspired. And I got this on clearance because there are some broken strings in here. Which I figure when working... When I'm adding something like this into to a project, I can deal with that. And I've got another Surrey. Now this one is from West 7th Wool here in Fort Worth. It's called Glowworm. And this is their Surrey Silk, 50 grams, 75% Brush Baby Surrey Apaca, 25% Mulberry Silk, lace weight as well. So whenever I want to add a little bit of fluff, I have pink, neon, or a mace of skeins. Hand dyed here in Fort Worth. This is Royal Flush Lace, 72% Kid Mohair, 28% Silk, and the colorway is Snow. So I've got a little bit of fluff I can add into things. And if that doesn't work, I have this. I have this. <laughs> this is bulky. It's a Universal Yarns Revolutions. And this one was given to me. Uh, the color is Restless. And it's 200 grams. Which those are each 50 grams. So this is 200 grams. So 612 yards. 57% uh, acrylic, 15% nylon, 10% alpaca, 10% wool, and 8% mohair. So it's... A thicker bit of fluff but it's still adding fluff and it's adding you can see it goes from purple to a green to a pinky purple to a green to a pinky purple so it could add some real color change to a project I just haven't decided what yet I've had that for several years I know it's not hand dyed but it kind of went with the fluff so uh, we've got Bashful Armadillo, the Texas Attractions Collection, and this is the Fort Worth Stockyards. I hate Fort Worth Stockyards. I took y'all there last year at Christmas in July. And so I mean, you're looking at a pair of boots, an old shirt, and it's definitely Fort Worth. I had another one of hers that I've already used. But she ran out of that at um, Fiber Fest two years ago, and I had to special order it. I had to have it. <laughs> All right, so I've got a Madeline Tosh, one of a kind. And this, it says it's fingering weight, but it's very thick. It looks thick to me anyways. I mean, look at all that color. Can you tell I go for the brights? And this is a one of a kind. And I think I got this. I'm thinking I got this off of the truck whenever the um, Madeline Tosh truck came through at On the Lamb. And it says fingering. I'll stick it with the fingering. Then I have an Arkansas Yarn Co. This is Juju's Petals in Yummy Sparkle, 75% Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon, and 10% Stellina. And this was an exclusive colorway at Juju's during Yarn Crawl this year. And 
as I said earlier, Arkansas Yarn Crawl just, or Yar Arkansas Yarn Co., they just had um, the Arkansas Yarn Crawl just finished up. And last year in Christmas in July, I was able to stop in there on our way off to vacation. So if you want to see what their shop looks like, go over there. Hank Me Home Tonight, Pinch DK. And this is It Had to Be You, E-W-E. Seventy five percent superwash merino, twenty five percent nylon. I don't remember what the occasion was, but there was something going on with this. Because these are not colors I would normally go for, but I do love them. Okay, this is Dinah's Home of Crafts Fingering Weight Moulin Rouge. Okay, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And I actually won this online because this is a British yarn. And this was one from, I think it was, I got it from one of my cheats with um, Allie for her, uh, it's too early in the morning, I guess. My brain is not there. Uh, shoot. Okay, something else I'll have to put down below. <laughs> but I won, I won this. And another year, I won this one. This is a Lonely Sock Lady Yarn dot DK. It's Hunting Hunter. It was a sock set. This one is 70 gram, or this one is 50 grams, uh, six stripe striper. And it came with a 20 gram mini in spruce, which is up in my advent up there. And this is 75% merino wool, 25% nylon. And this is what I was thinking I would go with for Seaver, and I'm still thinking that's going to be what ends up happening for the hat. Yep. Even after going through all this, I still think this is my best bet for Seaver. This is a Charming You DK Sock in a sock. Eslanti? Eslanti? Okay. I can't speak other languages apparently at all. E S C A L A N T E. 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. Marina is a travel quite a bit of a traveler, so she's she's got me on languages for sure. And I think Nitty Natty actually purchased the same yarn and did a hat for her husband. It looked like a team to him. I think the dolphins or something. I just love the turquoise with the rust. <laughs> this is La Bien Ami, hand dyed in Paris. Merino Super Sock. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. The colorway is Tangiopia. And I just love those colors. A little bit of purple thrown in there. What I am wanting to do with this and what I bought it for is to make me a pajama top, actually. Or in the winter time because I get cold, but I can't handle anything on my arms. So I figured a tank top to sleep in and just have it close to me. But I seem to have a color weight, color going. Because <laughs> this was for this, this yarn crawl. So this is Fox Bain Fibers called Foxy Juju. It was an exclusive color 
during yarn crawl for Juju's. And 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and this is fingering. And it kind of reminds me of bubble gum with a bit of a fox in it. This is Wisco Socks from Utopia. 80% superwash merino wool, 20% nylon, and this is out of Viroka, Wisconsin, and this was a gift. It's self-striping. Look at that. Oh. And this is the last one in here. Empty. Hank Me Home Tonight, Holiday Plaid in Stripey Sock. So this is another Christmas color. So I have a couple of Christmas colors to, to play with. And I do love the stripey, that black barber pole in there. Okay, so that's it for the hand dyed section. Other than what I've already got. Yeah, you know, I was going to show this to you, but I know this is a dream in color. Bill gave it to me because it was um, coming off on his hand so bad. Scorched lime in smushy cashmere, 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon. He always balls his up. But now that I have the nitty knotty, I think what I'm going to do. It's an olive. It's a nice olive. Um, I'm going to rescan this up on the Nitty Naughty and I'm going to soak it. And Dreaming Color ultra saturates their yarn, but it has a tendency to come off in your hands and everything else. So I've never, I think I've bought one of theirs. This was the only one Bill's ever bought. So it hasn't been a favorite, but if you like ultra-saturated yarns, it is amazing. I think Jimmy Bean has bought them now, but they started out locally. And I just, I'm not sure what all these are, but they're already caked up. This one I actually made a um, hat out of. That Seifer's borrowing at the moment. That, that's the inside of my muscle burr and it's supposed to be for assigned pulling and it's Madeline Tosh. This I think is Here Comes the Sun. Yeah, this one was Here Comes the Sun from Dye to Spin, and I used some of it in my Color Work sweater, so I only used a small amount. This one here I, I got off of an online um, yarn show during COVID, and I really like the colors, but I've tried using it a couple of times, and it I don't like the way it's pulling, so I'm going to have to work with that one. This is called Evil Eye. It's Bewitched, um, Bewitched Pigments Fiber Arts. And it's 100% superwash merino. So I can't make socks with it. But I'll figure it out eventually. This seems to be a wildflower one of some kind, a fall, something I was doing for fall. This one was caked up all beautifully for me and everything. I have no idea. I have no idea. So these are my I don't knows <laughs> to a large degree. <laughs> Let me get this back in here. <laughs> so I will at least know for it. But they're already caked up but not used. I'm sorry, I, I keep looking up and it's washed out. Okay, so a little trip through 
these are my commercial, I mean my very much commercial uh, sock yarns. With a few more. Okay. So there. <laughs> and I have West Yorkshire Spinner Signature in what color? The color has pulled off something 1109. It was one of the birds. Oh no, gingerbread. This was gingerbread. Oh, this was the Christmas one, gingerbread. That's what it was. Let's put them over here for the moment. This is KFI Luxury Collection Indulgence Merino. And it is 75% extra fine mercerized merino wool, 25% polymide. And it's a number two fine. So it's a it's a thick, it's kind of a thick fingering or a very light DK. How much is in here? It has 426 yards, so no, it's not. This is this is a fingering. But I got this to do some socks for Sam with. This was another color I thought would be fun for Sam. This is a Regia, Arnie and Carlos. These are not ones that are easy to find here in the US. Because uh, it's made in Germany. So the Regias and the West Yorkshire Spinners, these are, and the Opal, these are indulgences for me. There's just now starting to come into some of the local yarn shops. And I'm trying to see what color. Color just says 03655. And it's a super fine, but it is one of the Arnie and Carlos ones. Then this is on, O-N, 75% virgin wool, 25% polymide. Virgin wool, huh? I don't remember looking at that. So I'm thinking this may end up going over to Bill. But it's a stripey one. I'm feeling this already. Okay, this one this one's probably gonna go to Bill. <laughs> this is an Opal Magic Sky. And again, this is going to be a self-striping. Another on super sock. 75% virgin wool. 25% polymide. Color 33839, I think. Another one that may be going to Bill. <laughs> Here is an Opal. This is the Cotton Premium. So this is one of their cotton sock yarns. 38% wool, 32% polymide, and 30% cotton. Huh. I don't see a color. I can't find a color. Hmm. I don't know. That might work good for Seaver's hat. So I may give that to him, let him choose between those. All right, so this was a, I don't even know the name of it or anything. I've got some leftover Regia Tutti Fruity. I did a pair of socks out of that. I still have the other half left. I'll deal with that afterwards. Okay. So what I have left, what I have left are my alpacas.
Now this is bulky. And I have one skeined up because I was work I was making a bear out of it. And I don't know. I may may go back to that. I may not. But this is 100% alpaca, sheared from Pandolfi, who is a black bay in 2018. It is bulky. And you can see the black and brown in his coat. He's, he actually is from Landmark Farm Alpacas in Grassy Creek, North Carolina, just up in the mountains of the Blue Ridge, near my aunt and uncle's house. And I went up there in 2019, and I actually got to meet Pandolfi. So it's so cool whenever you have a picture of yourself with the animal where the yarn came from. And when you get to kind of just watch them walk around and everything. Uh, this one is 50% alpaca, 50% wool. And it's Mirasol Yumina. This is what I have left after making my first sweater. I did not pay close enough attention to the fact that, I mean, the wool did not give me any grief, I guess, because it's so much alpaca, because I don't have any problems with alpaca. But I didn't think about the fact that it would felt and I felt at that top. Yeah. Okay, so this is Juniper Moon Farm Moonshine Fine Baby Alpaca Organic Silk Highland Wool and Recycled Nylon. So 30% baby alpaca, 30% wool, 25% nylon, and 15% silk. And it is so, so soft. Color is 1005. So I've got it in with the alpacas just because oh, this is so heavy. This is seven ounces, 350 yards of hand spun alpaca. And I got this on at the local farm over here for one of their alpaca days. And I mean, the weight is so, I mean, it feels like it could, I don't know about that, what that seven ounces is in grams. What does this say? It says ounces. Yeah. So this is 3.52 ounces for 100 grams. So we're looking at 200 grams here. I wonder if it feels so nice and thick. Mm. So that will be for a very special project that I will that I will not felt. <laughs> okay. So I think we've gone through the damage. I'm sorry if the lighting has kind of come and gone a little bit. I know I've got just too much white in here, but I wanted the colors of the yarn to just shine through. So I hope you have enjoyed Christmas in July. If um, you haven't had a chance to watch any of them, go back. There's a few different ones that are a lot of fun between, let's see, we had uh, aliens, at least an alien grave. Mammoths, museums, grandkids, uh, yarn shops, what else? Christmas um, shops, German shops, live bands. I think I've gotten quite a bit in for the Christmas in July um, museum tour with my dad. So, I mean, we've gotten a lot in this year, and I hope you've enjoyed it. 
I'm going to take a little bit of a break for a couple of weeks before doing my next episode. And then on my next episode, I'll explain a little bit about this hat sitting behind me here. So come back for that. Please do like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, I've got some new subscribers and I'm loving it. Thank you very much for helping me grow my channel. I guess that's about it. Thanks again for joining me this year. And I will see you in the next Belinda's Bobbles episode. Hi, I just wanted to come back on here to show you the finished results of redoing my stash and reorganizing it. Um, I keep it in an armoire. It's an Ikea armoire that we got years ago when we remodeled Seaver's room. This was originally his. We took his closet out completely, put the armoire in, and added a door to the bathroom uh, to make it en suite. So since he decided, came back from college, he decided he wanted to be another room. So I got this one. So this became my stash closet. Okay, so this is much better than it was. Up here, I need one more good size container from Big Lots. So I will get that, and that's just my little overflow there. But everything else is contained. It's easy to access, and I can take it in and out. This is double deep, deep here, and you have seen all of this between the different videos. All right, thanks again for joining me, and I will see you on the next episode.